welcome back to my channel, YouTube viewers. This is going to be part eight, or excuse me, part nine in the series. What we're going to do is try to get this uh, thick brown mud redissolved. Set it up here on this hot plate. Now I'm going to take the stir bar out of this solution or out of this beaker here in the back and rinse it off. I've got it suspended by a magnet. this reaction what I'm going to do is take another look at our uh, solids that we got back here in this beaker this is our filter that would dissolve in hot boiling sulfuric acid it's a very thick viscous liquid in there that's jet black like ink what I'm going to do is set it back here on this heating pad I'm going to give it a little heat and then I'm going to add some hydrogen peroxide. This is 12% hydrogen peroxide from Sally's Beauty Supply. I'm going to add a little bit of this and see if we can get this blackness to go away in here. peroxide to this we did get the black to clear up in there and uh, I think we pretty much got all the reaction we're going to get out of this so what I'm going to do now is just turn the heat off and let that settle out in there over here I think this reaction is complete as well a whole lot of precipitate down there so there's probably not a whole bunch of platinum in here. I'm going to turn this off. Turn the stir bar off and we'll let both of these settle now and uh, come back and look at them 
after they've cooled off and settled. Maybe some filter paper. I'm gonna stick it down in our solution here. Gotta be quick because this is sulfuric acid and it will dissolve the paper almost instantly. So we're gonna get down in there, get a little on the filter paper, and then apply a drop of Stannis. I don't see a whole lot of reaction there. Paper's already starting to fall apart. And I don't see a very big reaction going on. So uh, I don't know what we got back here. Any uh, professional refiners watching? Comments in the comments section would be greatly appreciated. Let's get a quick look at this solution here now. I don't know if you can see it, but there is some very fine grain yellow precipitate down there. Not much, but what we'll do now and the uh, thick mud is gone out of there. So what we're gonna do now is, uh, I've got a filter here. We're gonna filter the yellow precipitate out of our solution. And then we're gonna go for uh, palladium. Uh, here we go, just gonna pour this into this filter very carefully and filter all that stuff out of there. This is our palladium in solution in this filter coming out of this flask right now. That thick mud is what I was trying to dissolve earlier. I couldn't see it very well because the solution is so dark. So I'm going to have to add some more 50-50 hydrochloric acid to get the rest of this to dissolve. Stir bar on. Put some heat to it. Add a little water. I'm going to add a uh, few droppers. Hydrochloric acid. And let's see if we get the rest of that precipitate to dissolve. Any platinum that was in our experiment will be bound up in that thick brown precipitate. So I want to release it by dissolving the thick brown precipitate with hydrochloric acid. It's been on for about 10 minutes, heating and stirring. It's kind of hard to see if that precipitate is gone out of there. But do you see some fine grain yellow precipitate, like talcum powder, which indicates uh, platinum? What I'm going to do here is make another 50-50 shot of still water and hydrochloric acid and we'll add that to our uh, solution up here and just let this go see if we get the uh, stuff to dissolve like we wanted to here now for about 15 20 minutes and uh, I'm gonna pull it down off of the heat now it's kind of hard to see
whether or not we got uh, the brown stuff dissolved. Sure looks different than it did earlier. We're just going to take this down off the heat now and uh, let it cool down. And then we'll uh, filter out and see if we still got any of those thick brown uh, needle crystals from the palladium in there. Our solution is looking good here. That's how we want to see it. There's some fine grained platinum salt down on the bottom down there. Not very much, just milligrams. But that's what I wanted to see here. I think all the uh, brown stuff has dissolved now. And if you remember in part eight, I was gonna use up this cheap ammonium chloride that I had, and it didn't dissolve very well. So now what I'm gonna do is instead of using that stuff, I'm gonna use some of the uh, top quality stuff here that I've got from uh, GFS chemicals, ammonium chloride, and show you the difference, how it should look when we dissolve this. I'm gonna dissolve a little bit of it into a uh, cylinder over here. We're gonna use this uh, to rinse our filter. We don't wanna rinse our filter with water because the precipitate in that solution is water soluble. If you tried to rinse it with water, it would go back into solution, pass through the filter, and contaminate our palladium. But I'm going to add some distilled water to our ammonium chloride here and make a nice concentrated solution. Uh, we got to rinse the filter with this ammonium chloride water, because if we tried to use water, as I pointed out earlier, we'd get uh, the platinum, that yellow looking powder there, is soluble in water. So we're gonna use ammonium chloride to rinse our uh, solution through the filter here. I'm going to start pouring this in now. One more look at it. You see the yellow precipitate? That's platinum. And we're going to go ahead and start rinsing this now. Or uh, filtering this. doing three things here. Number one, using the ammonium chloride to precipitate the platinum out of that solution. Number two, we're using ammonium chloride water to rinse that precipitate, which is platinum, out of the flask and down into the filter. And number three, we're infusing the palladium solution with ammonium chloride, which is required for the next step. there's platinum in our solution or not it doesn't matter We've got to have ammonium chloride in with this palladium in order for the next step which is chlorine uh, sparging to get our uh, palladium salt that's soluble in ammonia in the next step ammonium chloride water to rinse the filter out get as much as the uh, palladium solution down into the uh, flask as we can you see that yellow precipitate floating that's our uh, platinum salt not very
very much. Not enough to even try to refine here, but we're gonna take it out anyway. We'll put this up and save it for a, uh, another platinum refining. Wanted to show you the uh, ammonium chloride the difference. This is the stuff from GFS Chemicals. It's nice and clear. Got a bunch of junk floating in it or on top of it. I mixed up more than I need, and what I'll do is uh, save it in this uh, little jar right here. We'll use this again in the future when we do another platinum or palladium precipitation. solution infused with ammonium chloride in here all the platinum has been removed I'm going to pour a small sample of it into this beaker that's about 20 milliliters beaker up here I've got some sodium chlorate and what I'm going to try to do here instead of making a gas generator to bubble chlorine gas through this solution to convert the palladium to the soluble salt that we're after. I'm going to try adding some sodium chlorate right straight to our uh, stuff here, our solution, and we're going to see what happens here. Sodium chlorate going in. What I'm looking for here is for the uh, solution to turn color, it'll be lighter, should anyway, and then our uh, brick red palladium salt should come out of solution here. If this works, this will be much easier than setting up a chlorine gas generator. I don't know if it's going to work or not, let's see what happens. Adding the sodium chlorate to that hydrochloric acid solution forms chlorine gas. That's what's going on in your house. So it's the same thing as sparging it with chlorine gas. We're just avoiding having to set up the uh, gas generator here. And if you see a tiny bit of a color change, and I see some stuff forming down on the bottom of that beaker. If this works, that'd be fantastic. Look at that, man. It's, I think something's precipitating out. Oh, yeah, I think this might work, man. This is going to really save some time. Just adding sodium chlorate to our solution to get the brick red ammonia soluble palladium salt to precipitate out. Here it looks like nothing is going to happen. So I add a squirt of hydrochloric acid to help things along. In this footage, we're going to find out the importance of doing a, a small portion of the batch as an experiment uh, before we commit and go all in with the full batch. Earlier when I added that sodium chlorate, I added way too much. I think I added five or six scoops of it to that little beaker. And uh, one scoop would have been enough to make this reaction happen here. And you'll see in a minute that uh, I'm trying here to uh, break them bubbles up before it overflows. But you'll see here in a minute, I'm not gonna be successful and uh, I experience a runaway, delayed runaway reaction here. This is uh, probably three, four minutes maybe after I've added the sodium chlorate. You'll notice that I didn't have any gloves on and so I just uh, backed away from it as it started bubbling like this because it was spattering the uh, the material all over the place so I just backed away and let it go 
Uh, I didn't expect it to do this, and I had taken my gloves off when I came back out in the uh, shop there and seen the uh, reaction going, and that's when I took the uh, scoop and tried to kill them bubbles with it. I'm glad I used just a small sample for this experiment. If you look, you can see our solution looks real good down in there, and our brick red palladium salt came out of solution real nice and uh, this is one of the benefits of doing a small experiment here as opposed to uh, going all in with the entire amount I added way too much sodium chloride uh, chlorate sodium chlorate and experienced a delayed runaway reaction so now we know what to do when we uh, sparge the rest of our palladium solution. Now we'll use a much bigger container and much less sodium chlorate when we do that reaction. This turned out to be a very successful experiment. The solution's clear in there. All the brick red palladium salt is precipitated out. I'm gonna set it back here out of the way. Now, let me get my uh, piece of gear out of here. I don't need that anymore. What I'm going to do now is transfer this solution into this large beaker and I'll rinse it with our ammonium chloride water into this beaker. This should just be palladium in solution with no platinum. Oh, I do have a little bit of, of crystals down at the bottom of the beaker there. See them? So not everything uh, got dissolved. That's all right. We'll leave that in there. I'm not going to add that to our solution. I want to make sure we got a, a nice, clean palladium solution here. All right, now I'm going to put some of our sodium chlorate into our ammonium chloride infused solution here and we'll see if we can uh, get a decent reaction here like we got with our little experiment I'm going to put four scoops in here I'm going to put this thing on a time lapse I'm learning as I go here and you get to watch me do it I didn't know that that sodium chlorate added to that solution was going to work this well This is our brick red ammonia soluble palladium salt and boy does it look good. Adding sodium chlorate was a major, major time saving reaction over having to uh, set up the chlorine gas generator and sparge this uh, solution with that chlorine gas added chlor uh, sodium chlorate to this thing and it made our nice palladium salt so we're good to go here and let this settle out a little bit and then we'll go for filtering get our beaker back here that had our uh, overflow and what I'm gonna do is add this to our main here rinsing with the ammonium chloride best again probably won't be able to get all this off but let's see
adding one more uh, scoop, maybe two scoops of sodium chloride, chlorate, sodium chlorate to our uh, solution here. Still reacting. So we want to make sure and get enough chlorine generated in there to ensure that all of our uh, palladium salt comes out of that solution. that's coming out of here on a piece of filter paper. Let's do a stannous chloride test here and see what this stuff is. It's got a slight orange to yellow colored stain. GM's solution on that filter paper. And what we'll do is we'll add the uh, contents, the waste in here to our stock pot. water to rinse the uh, precipitate out of our beaker. Can't use water because the uh, water, plain water, will cause this stuff to go back to solution. This precipitate will dissolve with water. So I've got ammonium chloride water that I'm using to rinse it out with. this down a little bit
here that we've got just a tiny bit of platinum down in this funnel. And I'll save this for a later refining. What we want to do now is transfer the uh, palladium salt out of here into this uh, clean beaker. our ammonia soluble palladium precipitate. I'm going to set it up on the stir bar up here or the stir plate. Here I have some household ammonia and it's down to the uh, last 250 300 milliliters down here. There's some solids in here. I don't want to add that my uh, precipitate over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter this ammonia before I add it to our precipitate we're ready to dissolve our precipitate in goes a stir bar I got the ammonia filtered out I'm going to add the ammonia to our uh, precipitate here. This precipitate will dissolve in this ammonia. Turn on the stir bar. I don't think we need any heat. I think this will go just like it is. Been in here about a half hour, and uh, I'm gonna let it continue for a while here. Looks like I still got some of the precipitate left in there. Can't quite figure out why that isn't uh, dissolving like I'm wanting it to. We'll just leave it in here. Maybe we'll apply a little bit of heat here and see if we can uh, aid the process. The heat did the trick. We got everything dissolved. I'm going to turn the heat off now. We'll let this cool down and uh, then we'll pour it through the filter and we'll precipitate out the pure palladium salt with hydrochloric acid. Here we go, we're gonna filter our solution. We're gonna pour it right back through the same filter that we used to filter the uh, ammonia with into a clean beaker. Here we go, hot filtration. here is to get the uh, solids out of this solution. The palladium has been dissolved in the ammonia now. Only after we converted it to the brick red soluble, ammonia soluble palladium salt that you've seen earlier. That brick red salt is a uh, Is the uh, palladium in solution? Here we go. This is one of the coolest shows in refining. What we're going to do now is we've got our palladium dissolved in ammonia. I'm going to reacidify the ammonia now push the palladium salt out of this solution by adding hydrochloric acid. Now this is one of the coolest reactions that you'll ever see 
in refining. Here we go, adding hydrochloric acid in right now. See that yellow salt forming down there? Look at that. Oh my goodness. See the yellow precipitate coming out of the solution as I add the hydrochloric acid. That's pure palladium salt right there. Just beautiful. For me, this reaction is even more captivating than watching gold precipitate out of solution. I never get tired of watching this. We're gonna get our pure palladium salt in this filter now. Carefully. This salt is not soluble in water, so I can use cold water to rinse this off. Here is our beautiful canary yellow palladium precipitate pure palladium metal in there, believe it or not. And what we're going to do, I allowed it to set overnight so that all the moisture would come out of that thing. Now what we're going to do, we've got a fused quartz dish here. We're going to put the palladium in this fused quartz dish and then burn off material that we've got up here in this funnel, in this filter, into a uh, pure palladium sponge, and then once we get it burnt into pure palladium sponge, we'll put it in a crucible and melt it. Let's see if I get this out of the funnel here carefully. try to do here it's still kind of gooey but most of the uh, moisture is gone out of there Let's see if I can do this the next step is to burn that yellow palladium salt in that fused quartz dish so I'm removing that excess filter paper Put our 
left with is the uh, pure palladium sponge. Got this on low heat. It's still got quite a bit of moisture in there. So to prevent it battering everywhere as it heats up, I'm going to dry it off real slow here until all the moisture is gone. And then once all the moisture is gone, we'll start turning up the heat and we'll burn away everything so we got our pure palladium sponge. One other important point about this uh, calcining process is uh, we've got to go slow and heat this slowly. If we apply too much heat too quickly, that material will melt and then it'll boil off and your palladium will be lost up the stack of the fumarate. So it's important to approach this very slowly and uh, turn the heat up incrementally as it starts burning away. It's been on low heat now for about 15 minutes and uh, we're in the mid 100s as far as heat goes. So I'm going to crank this up to the next setting and let it sit here for another 20 minutes. It's been on this heat now for about 10 minutes. We're up to uh, up around 100. There's 190, 200. So I think we're ready to go to the next level. I'm going to crank the heat up to the next notch and continue to heat our palladium salt. This has been on now for about 35 minutes. I've got uh, most of the moisture driven off. So we're going to go ahead and put the heat on uh, medium high and let this go ahead and calcine and we'll get some uh, time lapse footage of the next few minutes here. Here's our uh, palladium metal. You can see uh, it's in a powdered form. It's got some ash mixed in with it. That's quite all right. I'm gonna transfer this to this crucible here. And then we'll uh, get it over on the melt table. And get it melted up into a button. Now we're going to put it over here on the melt table and cover it with some borax so we don't blow that powder out of the melt dish when we put the flame to it. It's been a while since I melted some palladium and uh, I put the torch on it, the oxyacetylene torch, and I cranked that flame up and that blob of metal just would not melt. But finally I just kept the uh, flame directed on the metal and it went into a little bead for me.
I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but coming up here in a minute, when that thing finally melted into a, a central mass, it got real bright. I'm talking bright as the sun. Put a little spot in my eyesight for a few minutes after this melt was done. One of the unique characteristics of the platinum group metals, palladium included, is that it does not discolor when it's heated. You'll see when I douse it in the water there, it's a bright, shiny piece of metal. Here's our little bead of palladium metal. We're going to get a weight on it now. See what we got for a yield on all that work. Looks like 2.2 grams of pure palladium out of my silver cell anode filters. Before I conclude my video here, I wanted to pull these up and uh, show what we're going to be doing in our next video. This is all gold-plated junk jewelry that uh, Mrs. Shree Tips finds uh, and she just sets it aside and saves it and we accumulate it. And there's got to be 50 or 60 pounds of uh, material here, but I'm going to try to build a uh, sulfuric acid stripping cell big enough to uh, get all the gold plating off of this gold plated junk jewelry. So that'll be our next video coming up. Here we are. At the end of the series, this is the ninth and final video. What I've got is a little bitty button of pure palladium to show for it. I forgot how hard that stuff was to melt. Uh, but we got it melted up, got it into a little button bead here, 2.2 grams. And then I recovered two other small buttons, beads of uh, gold from the anode filters and then I got a big buck of the silver out there that I got so most of the metal that I recovered from this project was silver a little palladium a little bit of gold and uh, I guess that'll do it man that'll conclude the video for the uh, silver cell anode filters recovery and refining Thanks for watching.